Hello and welcome. Today we're going to look at replacing a drive rod in a Lazy Boy recliner. This video will also include replacing some of those parts that are attached to the drive rod. So if your drive rod is okay, but you need to replace your rear swing, or maybe your toggle subassembly, or maybe lock plates, stick around because that will be included as well. So what is a drive rod? The drive rod is a square piece of steel that goes through the middle of the mechanism and at one end on the newer Lazy Boy recliners there's a pre-drilled hole where the handle attaches. So when you pull on the handle it rotates this rod and that's what opens and closes your your footrest and engages and disengages your ratcheting recline feature. So let's take a look at some of those other parts. I put together this mock-up to show you where the parts attach to the drive rod on the style of chair we're working on today. Keep in mind if you have a different style this configuration can and will vary. Okay so let's take a look at what we have here. At one end we've got our handle attached and as we pull the handle it lifts these rear swings and this is where the scissors attach that lower and raise the footrest. We have one at each end. Here in the middle we have the spacing link and it slides onto the drive rod when it's installed. Here we have the toggle subassembly and when this is installed it has a tension spring attached to the back that connects with the support shaft. Okay, and here we have two plastic parts. They're called bearing and the bearings are actually inserted into a hole and opening inside the arm frames at either end and the drive rod fits inside the bearings. Now if you have an older Lazy Boy this style you'll have lock plates here as well and this is part of the three position footrest feature on older chairs that use the metal configuration. Now in the chair we're working on today we won't have to replace these they're not present. We have the black plastic three position locks to take care of that function. Okay and finally we have a couple of clips here retaining clips to keep things in their proper place. This one here in the center note has an angle to it 45 degree angle. Now just a quick note on what causes these drive rods to snap to fail. It's here where the spacing link is attached on older versions they had a white bit plastic bearing. It's very narrow and sometimes this would slide out of position and whenever you'd rotate the handle or I should say the rod would rotate inside this metal piece the two would start rubbing together and cutting through the drive rod until it failed. So the redesign, the good news is the redesign has a heftier bearing in it and I've not seen any failures of this type since they've gone away from the earlier design. So when you install the new one you should not have a problem. So when you do a drive rod replacement all these parts have to be removed from the rod, drive rod removed from the chair, new one installed and all these parts and clips everything needs to be installed in the exact same position in order for the chair to work properly. So this is where you can run into trouble. So I suggest making a sketch of all the parts and clips before you remove anything. Okay. Now the position I use and you want to sketch it in the position you're working on it. So what I do is I have it in a position with the footrest fully open. That would be the handle pulled back, the rear swings pointing straight forward. And I make my sketch based on that orientation. I put a T on top of the drive rod in this position so I know that's top side when I install the new one. I'll make sure it matches. Now if the drive rod is broken you're going to have parts that are turned and twisted so you're going to have to use your imagination a little bit but you can see here in this position the toggle for example is is attached underneath the drive rod and there's a screw that attaches it on the bottom side. So that's why it's important to make note of all these details in advance. And when you do request your parts, you can also request a sketch as well, but I recommend you have your own. Okay. Now while you're making your sketch, you can also examine closely all the parts that may be damaged as a result of the drive rod breaking. The first thing to check is the extension scissors. Check and make sure that they're not bent or damaged in any way. 
If they are, add them to the parts list along with the drive rod. You want to carefully inspect all these parts. Here's an example of a, a damaged toggle that has been bent due to a drive rod failure. So make note of anything that else that's damaged or broken and add it to your parts list. So when your parts come in, obviously you want to make sure that you receive everything that you ordered. And you, what's really important is you want to check this drive rod because they come in different lengths and the positions of the pre-drilled holes can be in different locations depending on the style. So you want to make sure that this matches the original. So what I've done here is I've removed the back of the chair, turned the bottom upside down, and I've set up the orientation to match my original. I started by taking the replacement drive rod, locating the hole, so I know that this is the handle end, and on some of these you'll have beveled openings where the holes are drilled on one side and the other side you won't. If you have those beveled openings put them on the bottom side. Okay. So then what I'll do is I'll go around to the back of the chair make a visual check comparing the two drive rods. Make sure the length is correct and the spacing and location of the pre-drilled holes is also correct. Now in this case as you'll see in a minute with a broken drive rod and parts shifted out of position, that can be hard to determine just by looking at it. So what you may have to do is go ahead and take the clips and parts loose from the old drive rod, remove it, take the two halves, lay them down beside your replacement, and make sure it lines up before you get started. And the last thing to do is mark the top side of your replacement drive rod. I mark mine with a T with a Sharpie, just as I did the original. So that tells me this is the top side. I need to have it in this position when I'm working on it. Because once you slide the replacement in the chair, the rod can turn or spin on you. So you want to make sure, before you attach any parts, that you attach them in the proper position. So if you come across a burr that keeps parts from sliding off, like we have here, you'll have to file it down with a metal file to get the parts off. And you want to either put a rag down or remember to use a shop vac when you're finished to get the metal filings all vacuumed up. Alright, so we've got all the parts off the old drive rod. And of course, some of it's broken off, so it's not here any longer. But the point is here, if you're just replacing a part on the drive rod, you don't need to go any further. You just remove all the parts and clips, pull it part way out, slide the old parts off, slide your new parts on, replace all the parts that are in good shape, reconnect them, hook up the linkage, and you're finished. The repair is done for you. 
However, if you have a broken drive rod, we're just getting started. 